Welcome Japanese woodblock print collectors and enthusiasts. This is the second in my series on famous woodblock print artists. Today our ukiyo-e artist is Toyohara Chikanobu. We'll learn about his background and see some great examples of his popular prints and print series. So let's begin with his background. Chikanobu was born in 1838 in Niigata Prefecture. His father was a lower-level retainer of the local daimyo. Chikanobu trained in the martial arts, and he also showed a talent for painting. He took lessons in the Chinese Kano school of painting. He then studied print design with a student of Keisai Eisen, and then, when he was 15, he studied with Utagawa Kuniyoshi. During this time, he probably met Yoshitoshi, who was also Kuniyoshi's student. Around 1855, Chikanobu moved to the studio of Utagawa Kunisada, and then in 1862, he began working with Kunichika. This rough chart shows some of these connections. Kuniyoshi and Kunisada were the senior artists of the time, and below them are their students. In fact, I think Chikanobu Kyosai and Kunichika were frequent drinking buddies, and you can watch my video on the true story of Kunichika's drunken housewarming party, where Chikanobu actually chased Kyosai with a sword. Chikanobu is the only artist I know who was also a samurai. He started out as a retainer of the Saka Kibara clan. And after the collapse of the Tokugawa shogunate, he joined the Shogitai which was an elite samurai shock infantry, and he fought in the Battle of Ueno in 1868. Here's a couple of prints of that battle, one by Yoshimori and one by Kyosai, and an actual photo of the aftermath. Chikanobu then joined the Tokugawa loyalists in Hokkaido, where he fought in a couple of battles and achieved fame for his bravery on the battlefield. So Chikanobu was a brave warrior, but an artist at heart. In 1875, he decided to try to make a living as an artist, and he traveled to Tokyo and found work at one of the local newspapers. He also started to uh, produce woodblock prints. So when I think of Chikanobu, I think of beautiful women or bijinga, and I also think of war, which seem like opposites, yet Chikanobu is well known for both of these genres. Chikanobu favored the triptych format for his battlefield prints, and in 1877 he produced over 45 triptych prints documenting the events around the Satsuma Rebellion, which was a short civil war where a group of samurai led by Saigo Takamori attempted to defeat the imperial government of Japan. But it wasn't only men that Chikanobu depicted in battle. He also has many prints showing the women fighters. And this is one of the things that really impresses me about Chikanobu. He seems to have a great respect for bravery and honor and the men and women who fought and died for their beliefs. Throughout his career, Chikanobu also has many prints that document the events and activities of the Meiji government. In 1879, he did this triptych of the emperor and empress in the phoenix boat, viewing the cherry blossoms on the Sumida River. In 1884, he published one of his most famous series of 50 Oban-sized prints called Snow, Moon, Flower, with the theme of historically important people. These prints were beautifully designed, carved, and printed. This is one of the famous prints from the series in which he shows Taira Kiyomori looking out at his snowy garden and seeing the skulls and ghosts of the people he had killed. And in this one, Princess Sakura jumps to her death from the terrace of the Kiyomizu temple. On a lighter note, also from 1884, we have Moon in the Plum Garden, a gorgeous triptych with wonderful perspective and detail. These are the types of Bijinga compositions that are quickly recognizable as Chikanobu's style. In 1886, he published a series called 
Comparison of Days and Nights in Edo, which present a range of subjects from the history and legends of Japan. Notice how it has the same layout of snow moon flower with the rectangular section at the top telling other aspects of the story. There are many great designs in this series. I like this uh, scene of Princess Sarashina easily fighting off these men who were sent to attack her. In the late 1880s, Chikanobu produced a series called The Manners and Customs of the Eastern Capital. This series was produced as a response to the modernization going on in Tokyo. There was a nostalgia among the populace for the traditions of the past. So to honor that, Chikanobu produced prints which promoted the traditional aspects of Japanese culture. I really like this print of these boys playing in the evening and the bats flying overhead. In 1889, he gives us this all-star performance at Saruwakacho from the series Throughout the Seasons. Look at the perspective and the color and the detail. It, it really gives us this intimate window into that time in Japan. A similar Oban-sai series was published in 1890 called Annual Events and Customs of Edo. There were 12 prints, one for each month, featuring beautiful women. This one is from Nigatsu, or February, with the woman viewing plum blossoms during the Plum Blossom Festival. And from 1894, Cherry Blossom viewing from the triptych series the Chiyoda Inner Palace. The Chiyoda Palace was the imperial palace where the emperor and his family lived. And I wonder if Chikanobu had some sort of access to the palace grounds. In 1896, we have the court ladies of Chiyoda Palace guarding the retreat from the burning castle. And there was apparently a fire there in 1873 that destroyed the West Wing. But look how fashionable these women were in their black matching kimonos and naginata weaponry. In 1897, one of his most famous Bijinga series was published called Mirror of the Ages or Jidai Kagami. There are 50 prints of beautiful women from different eras in Japan's history. And care was taken to depict the correct hairstyles, the makeup, the fashions, and accessories. And in the inset box at the top of the prints, there was uh, historical scenes from that era. It's really a gorgeous series that shows the transition of fashion throughout history. And here is a triptych from that time of the Emperor Meiji, his wife, and Prince Haru. Okay. Now we're getting to the start of the 1900s. In 1904, there was the Russian-Japanese conflict. Chikanobu got pulled back into the war genre with a series of triptychs. Note how different these are from his earlier war prints. Much more precise, a simpler color palette, and very carefully composed. And here is a print of a mother taking her son for a walk during that war. Notice the patriotism. Chikanobu's last works in the early 1900s continued to feature scenes of Japan's past. He died at the age of 75 from stomach cancer in 1912. And although Chikanobu didn't achieve the fame of a kunisada or a yoshitoshi, he's still considered among the best ukiyo-e artists. I see him as a warrior, a man of honor and respect, one who truly valued Japan's culture and traditions. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and happy collecting!